Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be discussing 10 different NHL players that will be traded this offseason. Now it is a little bit early to be going through the offseason trades that could potentially happen, but this offseason in terms of potential turnover could be one of the most eventful offseasons we've seen in a very long time. With the amount of free agents and the expanded draft and all the different rumors coming up, this could be an offseason for the ages. But who are the biggest and most likely players to be traded at this year's trade deadline and what new players will we see on new teams going in to next year? Watch till the end for all of the potential player trades and trade rumors and hit that subscribe button if you are new. 60% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed, so every bit helps. And if you enjoy hockey content just like this one, we'd love to have you in the grab game. Now, the first NHL player that I think will be traded in this year's offseason, we're going to move on to the Washington Capitals and big-time drummer surrounding big-time center Evgeny Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov is a very, very fascinating one. He's 29 years old, $7.8 million on his deal until 2025. But this was a guy back in 2018 that won the Conn Smythe Trophy for the Washington Capitals and has been a huge part of that Washington Capitals team. And when you look at his point numbers, it's not the worst thing over the past couple of years, but it has obviously dipped. He had 29 points, 9 goals, 20 assists in 41 games played this year, 52 in 63 the year before that. But obviously the playoffs have been a different story as combined in the last two seasons playoff wise, he has 5 total points in 11 total playoff games. Definitely not what you'd like compared to seasons like 2018 where he was an absolute monster. But there's a lot of teams out there that I think would definitely like a reclamation project with Evgeny Kuznetsov. I mean a team that I think should be looking at him is the Buffalo Sabres who have all the cap space in the world and honestly might as well take a shot on a guy as skilled as that and the Washington Capitals seem to be right now at least with how that development is going right now with Kuznetsov not really wanting to fit with the Capitals kind of just seeming disinterested the Sabres could definitely sweep in get him for a pretty good price and have him if especially if they trade Jack Eichel as their number one center not the worst thing in the world there and especially for a desperate Washington Capitals team that needs cap space $7.8 million is a lot, and that could be one of the main reasons as well that we do see a trade this offseason. But especially for a team like Buffalo, they're a team that can work with the defensive lapses, let's say, and I mean, I don't think the defensive lapses will be costing them a playoff spot. So I think they would have the space and would have the freedom to go after a guy like Kuznetsov, make that work while he's still in his prime. But now we can move on to the second NHL player that will be traded in this year's offseason. I already made a video about him and five potential destinations for him and mock trades surrounding that. But now going on to number two, we will have to focus on a guy that really has to be mentioned in this video too in Seth Jones. Seth Jones, before the last video, I haven't really mentioned him too much regarding the trade rumors, but Seth Jones is a guy that is very, very likely to be traded in this year's offseason, and it could happen before the draft. There were reports that it could happen around draft time, and maybe Columbus makes a deal there. Maybe they influence picks. Maybe they get something done there, but it would make a lot of sense that this happens pretty soon, and when it comes to Seth Jones, mostly it's just because Seth Jones doesn't want to stay in Columbus, and that's why the trade rumors have started to come up. He has this year year and next year on his deal so he only really has one year left and you'd be rental if he were to be traded at the trade deadline but I don't see Columbus really waiting that long I think it'll be an offseason trade especially for a team that wants to go get him they can acclimate him to their system a lot earlier get him for training camp and that would be even more value for the Columbus Blue Jackets there there's been a lot of few to, quite a few teams that have been confirmed already to be in the race teams like Montreal Chicago and the LA Kings so there's already definite interest and for a guy like Seth Jones that hasn't been great over these past couple of seasons I've always thought he had potential to be a top two defenseman and be one of the better ones in the league, but I think for a team that does end up training him, there is a decent chance that they can end up unlocking that because I think the skill is definitely there, but the results have been lackluster at best. I'm really hoping it works out for him though, because again, if it goes right, he could be one of the better defensemen in the NHL. But right now for Columbus, that is far from the case. But a point that we have brought up in the past is just the Wierenski versus Jones effect where people are saying Seth Jones has been bad because he's been on a bad team. But when Zach Wierenski played this year, he actually put up some great underlying results and looked pretty good in terms of the eye test. Yet Seth Jones looked and analytically showed that it was one of the worst years of his career. But I do think Seth Jones will eventually be all right, especially if he goes to a team like LA or a team like the Chicago Blackhawks who has worked with steady rock solid defensemen in the past. 
podcast. But now we can move on to the third player here that will be traded at this year's offseason. And we're going to stick with the Columbus Blue Jackets and go on to one of their main goalies here. And this one might be one of my more controversial takes because especially with the goalie situation in Columbus, it can get a little bit funky, but I think they will end up relieving one of those goaltenders from the tandem. And I think it will end up being Jonas Corposalo. To me, I think Columbus will keep Elvis Merzlikens and, and end up trading Jonas Corposalo. And I think there's quite a bit of reasons for that, mostly because Merzlikens is just the better goaltender. Corposalo has had a lot of chances, and he did play more this year with worse results. And I do think Columbus did play worse in front of him, but it still didn't seem like enough of a difference to truly make him the starter of the future that Columbus has been trying to make him to be. Elvis Merzlikens is a very, very good goaltender, and Corposalo has kind of been average in that. And I'm not even sure how much value Corpus Salo would get on the open market, but I think that'll be another move that Columbus makes, kind of hinting towards going full rebuild and eventually having one true starter in that, which is what it probably should have been all along. Now, speaking of definite changes, we're now going to move on to my fourth player that I think will be traded in this year's offseason. A guy that I think is pretty hard to pinpoint in terms of his future with his current team, but I think if he does get traded, could get a lot of value back and could be a pretty sneaky under the radar trade piece this offseason. We're now going to move on to the LA Kings and move on to their veteran forward, Dustin Brown. Now, Dustin Brown is a super fascinating player. Age 36 still has a lot of value to his name, and even though a couple years ago it was looked that is one of the worst contracts in the NHL. He makes $5.8 million, but looking at the past couple of seasons, he had this year 31 points in 49 games played, 17 goals as a 36-year-old. And even though the decline might be a little bit likely, that's a player that with his leadership, with the cup wins, and with still how good he can be offensively, especially on the power play, Dustin Brown could have some major value going the other way for the LLA Kings. A team that is already kind of in that weird position where they're kind of rebuilding, but kind of making some huge advancements. They were a lot better this year than they were the year previous and that also factored into things but I think if LA goes in the next year and is at least once again kind of on the outside looking in I think at least we'll see him as a trade deadline option but I would not be surprised if the offseason is where he actually gets dealt because I think that's where his value will be the most sure the trade deadline would also be an option but I think again teams would want to have that sure bet going into training camp especially for a player like that that could already make relationships and establish himself in the locker room which is another part of why you're trading for Dustin and Brown in the first place. And there are a couple of teams out there that even though they might need some retained salary going from the LA Kings on that Dustin Brown contract, I think would definitely love to have a guy, again, that's been there, done that, has those two Stanley Cups, was the captain for the LA Kings. I mean, crazier things have happened. Maybe he wants to reunite with Jeff Carter for Pittsburgh and go back there and try to make something work for next year. Maybe a team like the Philadelphia Flyers brings him on, maybe the Boston Bruins if they lose this year. Maybe they want to add a middle six presence to that leadership group. Who knows, but I think there will be a lot of interest in him, even if he is on the older side of things. We are now going to move on to the fifth NHL player that will be traded in this year's offseason. This is going to be another no-brainer, and with how big of a player he is, it's kind of crazy to think that we pretty much know he will be traded, and we kind of accepted that fact. And coming in at number five, we're going to go to Buffalo Sabres number one centerman in Jack Eichel. Jack Eichel will be traded this offseason. Elliot Freeman even said in his last 31 thoughts that they are going to trade him this offseason. It's pretty much an inevitability. We've gone through the potential scenarios. We've gone through the possibilities, the Rangers, the Kings, all these different potential situations. But honestly, I see a Jack Eichel trade happening pretty soon. They might have some also some leverage throughout the draft as well. They're probably going to want to get a pick in the first round as well to add on to their first overall pick. And that's going to be something to look out for forward to. I mean, maybe for New York again, that 50, 16 overall big, not the worst thing in the world to trade. I think Buffalo is definitely going to be acting this year's offseason, and we of course know Jack Eichel is pretty much going to be gone. The question marks come after that. If maybe they trade Sam Sam Reinhardt, maybe they trade guy like Reyes with Tristan Alina, but Jack Eichel is the one we know, and honestly, it's kind of weird. Again, he is so good, so amazing, and somebody is going to absolutely have him fall onto their lap. Again, Taylor Hall was traded for a second round pick in Anders Bjork. I don't think the Rangers will need to give him an arm and a leg, and they have quite a bit of arms and legs. Definitely will be an interesting offseason, but Jack Eichel will not be a Sabre next year. We know this now. Now, speaking of knowing, we can now go on to number six and go on to a player that if 
Jack Eichel gets traded to the New York Rangers. I'm pretty much 100% of the knowledge that he will be gone from the Rangers. We're now going to move on to number six, the sixth player who will be traded this year's offseason and go on to centerman Ryan Strom. Ryan Strom to me is pretty much the obvious guy, the obvious NHL-ready player to go back for the Buffalo Sabres, especially they kind of retool there and they want to get another centerman. If they don't go after a guy like Kuznetsov, you would then have a center core of Ryan Hart and Strom, which isn't the worst thing in the world, especially if you didn't have a guy like Strom. I think Buffalo will want a pretty good NHL player back, and I think that will be the player that Buffalo ends up getting, which honestly isn't that big of a loss whatsoever. Even though Ryan Strom has been great for the New York Rangers in that small sample size, you get Jack Eichel and you get Mika Zbigniewicz as your top six centers, you're absolutely taking that. And again, I think the New York Rangers will make some accommodations to actually make it happen. I'm so, so hoping that it actually happens because again, the Rangers have so many options to get it done, especially that new ownership or a new management group coming in and the new decision making is going on there. I think Jack Eichel will be the guy they end up targeting. But now we can move on to the seventh NHL player who I think will be traded in this year's offseason. This is an interesting situation because with this player, he does have a no move clause, but he does obviously have the option to waive that if a certain trade works out for him. And I think we will see a certain trade work out from this offseason. I am talking about Florida Panthers defenseman Keith Yandel. Keith Yandel's situation is very weird, if I had to put it in one word. He makes $6.3 million for this year, the next, and the year after that. So he does have a decent amount of term, but he still can be a capable player in you if he's used in the right situation. And the problem is, with Florida, he just hasn't been used in the right situation, and he has been a liability at points for that Florida Panthers team. Now, I think for Yandel, he obviously doesn't have to waive that no-move clause, but I think Yandel wants to win a Stanley Cup. He wants to be playing as as much as humanly possible and he wants to be a guy that is on the power play as a main fixture and I think if the Florida Panthers were to offer him a trade somewhere else to a team like I'm just spitballing here 100% like a team like Boston let's say and he was the main guy in terms of the power play that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world I think for a guy like that who wants to chase that cup he is getting older he's 34 years old but I think for both parties involved a change is needed he was scratched multiple times throughout the playoffs too it just didn't seem like he was a fit anymore for that Florida Panthers team he obviously he wants to keep that uh, game's played record going as well, and I want to see that happen, and I'm not sure if it is going to happen with the Florida Panthers, and I think a mutual mutual connection and mutual agreement might be made this offseason. Again, I think there will be a, quite a bit of teams that would want to be at least interested in him, but I think for the Florida Panthers, it might be one of those deals that they just give up a couple of picks to make that contract go away, and then you could add somebody else, and again, that's a $6.3 million contract off the books, especially for a team like Florida who needs all the cab space they can get to guys, sign guys like Huberto and Barkov in the future getting that contract off the books is tremendously huge. And another reason I was mentioning Keith Yandel as a trade option to get rid of Cap is because people have been mentioning Sergei Bobrovsky. If they end up getting rid of Sergei Bobrovsky, I will eat a shoe. It is not going to happen in any stretch of the imagination. But we can now move on to the eighth NHL player who will be treated at this year's offseason. This is a player on the Toronto Maple Leafs that I think could definitely maybe use a change of scenery, but he's a guy that Toronto is likely to lose in this year's expansion draft if they don't act quickly. And no, and of course, if it's not Mitch Marner, it is centerman Alexander Kerfoot. Kerfoot's a super fascinating player to me. I think Pot really had his best year of his career, was super versatile, was playing on pretty much every single spot you can imagine as a third line center, power play, penalty kill, defensive responsibilities. Kerfoot was really doing it all in a very, very solid sample size. And I think for a team like Seattle, that's really the main guy they're going to look at just for free if, if Toronto ends up giving it up. But I do think that they can make a trade happen before that and maybe give up a guy like Pierre Engvall instead or maybe a guy like Travis Dermott. But I think losing uh, losing Kerfoot for nothing would be just a disaster for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think they're a smart enough team to make something happen before that expansion draft. And I think that's what they will do. I mean, it might give them maybe like a third or a second round pick, but still, that is easily worth it, especially if you were to give them away for nothing in Seattle. I think teams will make quite a few deals like that but Kerfoot will probably be one of the most notable ones we see around the expansion draft. But now we can move on to the ninth NHL player who will be traded in this year's offseason. A player that is kind of like Kerfoot in the sense that he's making maybe a little bit too much for the team that has him. He might be on the outside looking in. It could be fodder for the Seattle Kraken if they don't end up trading him. We're now going to move on to the Colorado Avalanche bottom six and move on to JT Comfer. Now they're doing pretty well in the playoffs, but JT Comfer has been a little bit of a non-factor. He kind of had one of the 
more, more seasons of his career this past year, and he's making $3.5 million for this year, the next, and the year after that, which is just too much for the Avs as a guy that only got 18 points this year on that bottom six. Yes, he's had more of a defensive role there, but that's a guy like just, just like Kerfoot, you could get some assets for it instead of giving them away just easily to the Seattle crack. And I think that will be what the Colorado Avalanche do, especially in a case with J.D. Comfort where we know he can be around a half a game producer or half a point per game producer and still be a pretty solid middle six player. But I especially with guys like Burr, uh, especially with guys like Saad and Landeskog and Grubauer coming up on their deals this season, they're going to need all the cap space they can get. And I think J.T. Comfort is another guy that for Colorado will just have to go for salary cap reasons. Now going on to the last player and the 10th player who I think will be traded in this year's offseason. Well, not the last, but the 10th I'm going to mention in today's video. I'm now going to move on to my favorite team and move on to starting goaltender right now, I guess, technically in Anton Hudobin. Now, I am the last person that wants to get rid of Anton Hudobin. I think he's an amazing person, a great personality, and was huge in the Stars' run to the 2020 Stanley Cup Final. But I think mean, that's another player that, just like Comfort, just like Kerfoot, you will probably lose in the Seattle expansion draft. And I think you can still get some assets for him. He is on the older side of things at age 35 and is a $3.33333 million contract this year, the next, and the year after that. It's just a little bit too much money for a guy that this past season was about as average as you could possibly got. And he was kind of a below average when Dallas really needed him down the stretch. Jake Onger is the start of the future and Ben Bishop might come back and be healthy next year and at least Anton who dove in, in a weird place I think he will be on a different team next year whether that's will with Seattle or if Dallas is smart enough to trade him in the first place. And I know it will be controversial saying that Hudobin probably needs to be traded, but just in the salary cap world, especially with the expansion draft coming up, I think it does sadly need to end up happening. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. We're on the road now to 37K and every bit helps. And of course, comment down below your thoughts on today's video, on today's picks. What do you agree and disagree with? And who do you think are the biggest players Players that will be traded in this year's offseason, let me know. Make sure you share the video with your friends, get the players and the potential trades out there, and click on this card for all my hockey rankings content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Have a great night, everyone, and goodbye.